Hi and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be working on this Seat Altea. It's covered 211,000 miles, it's a diesel, uh, from memory it's a 2005 model and it's an automatic. So as per the thumbnail, a friend of mine has paid £500 for this car, which is a bit of a bargain because finding any car for under £1,500 in the UK at the moment is extremely hard. So this for 500 quid is a really, really decent find to be fair. So he picked this car up from a mechanic and we believe it's been sat around for about six months. Um, still got some of the previous owners junk in the boot which will clear out shortly and it's just a bit grubby and disgusting. And obviously he doesn't want to be sitting in someone else's filth so we're just going to spend a day and a half cleaning this up as best we can and improving it. As we can see on the wheel arch it's got a few scuffs and scrapes in it so we'll try and address those as best we can but it, all we're trying to do here today is just make a general improvement on this older vehicle. So initially I've just sprayed the wheel and wheel arch liner with some all-purpose cleaner, let that sort of work its magic, jetted that off, then I've put another coat on, agitated the plastic wheel arch liner with a, a brush and the face of the tyre, washed that off, and then I'm going to apply a very strong alkaline wheel cleaner. Um, it's not acid based obviously so it's a little bit less aggressive. That's soaked in for a bit and then I'm going to use one of these stiff bristle brushes just to work in there and really try and get as much of that caked on brake dust as possible. I'm using a selection of EZ wheel brush or EZ wheel brushes depending on how you want to pronounce it. The first one we're using the wheel arch, it looks like a giant bog brush basically, or a toilet brusher to say if you're outside of the UK. And the second one which is on screen is more sort of cone shaped and that's really good for getting into the barrel on the back of the wheel. Once that's thoroughly rinsed off, I'm going to use some Kosh Chemi um, sort of iron fallout wheel remover. These are the ones which are reactive, so they turn purple. I'll do some accelerated time here for you to see that in, in practice. This is probably left for, for about five minutes. And then after that, I'll use the EZ wheel brush again, just to sort of scrub behind the barrel of the wheel, remove any of the last sort of disgusting brake dust and junk that's on those wheels as best we can. They weren't perfect at the end, but it was a marked improvement compared to what we started with. So with the wheels done, we can now look at to the rest of the bodywork on the car. What I'm going to do, first of all, is spray it down with some more purpose cleaner, and then I'm going to use an interior detail brush, it's quite soft, just to go around things like these rubber door mouldings. As we're about to see, I'll move the wing mirror and just get behind there as well, because there's quite a lot of green sort of algae lichen-y type stuff growing there, um, and around the door handles. And also around the front of the car, where it's got that uh, grill with all the little cones sort of shaped and hexagons around the front of it. We'll get the brush in there and give that a good scrub and just clean it all out. It's important to get those areas whilst you're washing a car. I know it sounds bizarre. If you were to miss a little bit in the center of a panel, that's not the end of the world. You could just wipe it off with a cloth. Not that you should miss things like that. But areas around sort of door seals and things that you really need to jet wash uh, out to get the real sort of ingrained crud out of, it's really important to get that done in the wash process.
So just like the outside on the rubber door mouldings, I've used this small detail brush to go around things like this petrol flap. I've also done inside all the door shuts in the vehicle, including the tailgate, and given that a thorough good scrub and then rinse out, as we'll see on camera. This particular vehicle, because the customer was gonna keep it, it's not something that's being resold or going through the trader, etc. He opted not to have the engine bay cleaned. His attitude was, it's an old car, I don't mind, just leave it alone. So best not to tempt fate as it, is, as it were. So on this particular vehicle, we're not gonna be cleaning the engine bay. So other things I've done on this vehicle prior to giving its final wash is go over with some fallout remover. That's a process where you spray it all over the car and it will remove any iron filings. And I've also done some tire and glue removing as well. So that stuff can be quite stinky. So it's probably a better time to do it here outside on the wash bay uh, rather than doing it in the workshop where it can be quite smelly. So with the car inside the workshop, we can look to start removing some of the previous owner's junk out of the boot, which I think from memory was dog poo bags and some sort of nappy wipe things and a random paintbrush. I'm also gonna open the boot here and if you see the sticker on the left hand side, I'll do zoom up of that in a minute. This gives me the code at the top here, which is LS7U, which is the paint code with the vehicle. So this is gonna enable me to order up some touch up paint for my local paint supplier, which we're gonna be using later on the video. After that, it's just a simple case of going around the car with various little brushes and the hoover or vacuum cleaner as I always get corrected on and just giving the car a good thorough vac prior to cleaning the dashboard down and starting to work on the plastics removing sort of the ingrained dirt from them. So the interior cleaner I'm using uh, is the same all-purpose cleaner I was using on the outside of the car. That's Kosh Chemi Green Star. On the exterior of the car, I was using it around about five to one because it was pretty disgusting. I needed it to be a little bit more powerful. When I'm using it on the inside of the car, it's around about 10 to one to uh, dilution ratio. And it's just a simple case of how I do things is just to get one of these little bristle brushes, reasonably stiff to be fair. Um, it's just going to enable me to get into all the grains and the plastic um, and sort of the pattern of it and just remove all the dirt. And then what I use is a damp microfiber just to wipe all the soap and residue and dirt off. I'll periodically rinse that in a nice clean bucket of warm water to keep it all fresh. And I'm a big advocate of using an airline as we see on camera. Uh, two reasons, it's very good at sort of blasting all the ingrained dirt out of little areas. As we can see, it gets you random parking tickets out as well. And it also dries the surface so if Sometimes using steam cleaner is more effective, but you can't actually see what you've got. Whereas the airline not only drives the dirt out, but it also dries the plastic immediately. So if there's anything which is ingrained that you might have missed, you can go over it again and give it a second pass. So we're about to see a bit of slow-mo footage with the airline. Uh, two reasons here. Number one, it's gonna highlight exactly how powerful the airline is and how good it is so these cup holders had some really ingrained stuff in there and doesn't matter how much you vacuum it or try and agitate it with a brush you could be there for quite some period of time now with the airline it just literally blasts it straight out which means it's very very effective 
And secondly, that's why I wear a full face mask when doing the interior of a car, because number one, the airline's gonna be blasting debris into the, into the atmosphere, whether that's gonna be dust or chunks of rubbish, and I don't want that going in my face and my lungs. And also, if you're cleaning cars every day of the week, constant exposure to all purpose cleaners is probably not the best for you. So it's just a safety precaution. And we're on to the section that most people love the most, the filthy seat extraction. So I've pre-soaked these seats with all-purpose cleaner, being the green star, uh, giving it an agitation with a brush, and then I'm using a Karchapuzi 110 uh, wet vac to give these seats a good clean. So first of all, the first pass, I'm just going over there and sucking out what I've scrubbed in manually with the brush and the uh, sort of IK pump sprayer. And it gives me a good indication of where the sort of most soiled areas are. And then on the second pass, I'll use the machine's own internal water supply and really pump as much water as I need into certain areas just to extract all the sort of grubbiness. I had to be a little bit careful on the corner of these seats because um, the foam was starting to come a little bit away. So as you sort of got the wet vac extractor over it, it was trying to lift the corner of the cushion up. So to sort of be a little bit sort of careful. As these vehicles get older, some of the seats start to deteriorate quite a bit. So I've added a little bit of footage here of the machine. So the tank on the left hand side of the screen is a freshwater tank and the one on the right hand side is where all the wastewater is being sucked up from the nozzle. So a nice little visual representation of what we've achieved in this section. The first bucket is um, all the dirt and filth that's come off the interior plastics of the vehicle. And the second bucket is what I've extracted out of the seats and the carpet. So currently in the UK it's around about 28 degrees, so it's nice and hot. So the interior plastics have dried very quickly, enabling me to dress them. Uh, as usual, we're gonna be using Aerospace 303. Great product, not the cheapest on the market, but however, it sort of dries, gives a nice satin finish. There's no greasiness to it, and it's got a UV protectant in it as well. And once I've done that, what I'll do is I'll put the windows back up on the car before I machine polish it or work on the outside. But however, it's a good practice at this point really just to clean the top of the glass so that you won't have that horrible tide line if someone drops the window down and it saves me having to do it later on. So 
So at 211,000 miles and 500 pounds, we're definitely not gonna be chasing paint perfection with the correction. So all I've done here is go over with a Chemical Guys cutting pad and some Kosh Chemi H9 uh, compound initially, buff that off. Um, some areas I might have gone over two or three times if there was you know, a specific spot that I thought I could try and improve. And then after that, I've gone over with some Rupes Uno Protect. Uh, the great thing about this product is it will take any of the slight marring you might get with a H9 um, out of the paintwork, and it's also a sealant, so it's sort of a one-hit wonder. You just put the product on, it does its magic, and then you wipe it off and you haven't got to put a wax or anything on it afterwards. And while I was in this area, the headlights were starting to look a little bit hazy, and with the polisher, you can just buff them up and remove that. And improve them so I thought while I'm here I might as well do it as well. So unfortunately when you order up touch-up paint or collect touch-up paint from places like Halfords I find it can be so hit and miss. Um, Sometimes the colors aren't remotely like what they're meant to be. Uh, that's probably possibly sometimes down to manufacturers changing tints or different sort of variations over a car's production year or the color codes. So by getting it from my paint supplier, the match on this is pretty good to be fair. It's not something the customer had expected me to do. I just thought, you know, it's gonna spoil the sort of overall look of the car. It just improves it a little bit. And as we move to the front wing, I'm not expecting miracles here. I mean, you know, it has got a gouge in the front wing, but if we just touch it up, it just takes your eye off it a little bit. So this car doesn't have a ton of black trim on the outside of it, but there's this large piece around the windscreen, which is sort of a focal point, and it has plastic sill covers as well. So I'm gonna use this long life sort of bumper dressing or black trim dressing, just to sort of finish that bit off. And once that's done, I can then look to clean the rest of the glass in the car. And then finally, we'll do something with the alloy wheels as well. So I'm bound to be asked what colour paint do I use for touching things in. So I use B&W Titan Silver, I think the colour code's 354 off the top of my head. Um, it's very good at matching majority of alloy wheels. So things which are a little bit darker in colour like Range Rovers or Vauxhalls which may have like a sparkly sort of more metallic-y silver, it won't match those but most Volkswagen Range, B&Ws obviously and other cars it matches very very well. Also, this car's obviously got plastic wheel arch liners, so I use Kosh Chemi's Motor Plus, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, you can use that as an engine bay dressing or for things like the plastic wheel arch liners. It's very, very good. And then once all that process is done, uh, we'll take the vehicle outside and have a look at a little bit of before and after and what's coming up in next week's episode. So I'm pretty happy how this one's turned out. As I say, we weren't chasing perfection with it due to its age mileage and just general condition to start with, but it's a monumental improvement. And the main thing is the car doesn't smell anymore. I mean, it, it did stink a bit inside, to be honest. When the uh, builder's wife dropped the car off, she's like, can we do something about the smell? Because it stinks in there. And I was like, okay, that's not a problem. We'll make that priority. So successfully after sort of wet vacuuming the seats extensively in the carpet and scrubbing all the plastics down, we'd removed this sort of mouldy stench really out of the car and made it quite a nice place to sort of sit in again. 
Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a good opportunity to do so um, because next week's episode is a real project. Um, it's probably going to be about a 30 to 35 minute video, I would have thought, because um, the thing is absolutely disgusting. It's battered on the outside, battered on the inside. As we can see on the footage, it's just gross. All the seats have come out of it. It's a real project. So I even had to get involved, as we'll see on camera, in doing a bit of paintwork on the exterior. So well worth a subscribe to the channel and let's say it's already filmed i'll be in the process of editing this shortly so hopefully this will be out in the next uh, week or two once again thank you very much for watching the video and i'll see you on the next one